I'm Lee Patrick Sullivan in the Energy News Center. The president released his 2011 budget this week, revealing big changes in funding for the energy sectors. Among them, the elimination on tax preferences for fossil fuels. Joining us now to discuss these changes is John Felmy. He's the chief economist for the American Petroleum Institute. Now, John, I'm going to go out on a limb here and just guess at API. We're not happy with uh, these budget cuts. Absolutely. We're very concerned about it because it's repeating the mistakes of the past under Jimmy Carter. We learned from the tax increases then that it results in reduced production, increased imports, loss of jobs, and a loss of revenue. And those are all things that we don't want to see happen right now. Now, you, you had to have known that this was coming. This was a big push that uh, uh, President Obama did in the 2008 campaign. He said he was going to target these tax exemptions. Now, um, a year later, he's living up to his campaign promise. Was there any sort of uh, precautions that API, uh, your, your member, your members were trying to uh, put in place because you knew that this was coming? Well, the main thing we tried to do was uh, inform people about what the negative impacts of this could be. Uh, we talked to all the constituents uh, in Washington, and we still saw it in the president's budget last year. Fortunately, the Congress did not act on that, but uh, hopefully going forward we'll see wise policy, because really all we need to do is open up more areas for access and we can achieve a lot of benefits. And if, when there's more benefits, uh, the oil companies make, oil and gas companies make more money, and more money means more tax revenue f for the U.S. Treasury, correct? Absolutely. What it means is we pay to lease new areas, which in uh, the previous fiscal year in 08 was $10 billion alone. We'll pay royalties, we'll hire people, and we'll produce more oil so we import less oil. Those are all big positives. Now, what if these uh, tax incentives are, are taken away as the uh, president wants? Uh, what, what will we f first see coming from the oil and gas sector? What will be some of the results? Well, every dollar you take away the, from the industry is a dollar that can't be invested. It's a dollar that won't generate jobs. It's a dollar that won't reduce our trade deficit. It's a dollar that won't result in future government revenues. Uh, we've learned this for the last 25 years, and uh, you know, let's remember that we shouldn't repeat mistakes of the past. Now, you have also understand that President Obama has a, a separate agenda besides trying to cut down the. Um, the, the tax incentives for oil and gas companies, he is trying to get people to stop using oil and gas. So isn't this a good way uh, to uh, you know, cut down on the exploration of oil and gas? Well, the fact of the matter is we're going to use oil and gas for the foreseeable future, for decades to come. If you look at the Department of Energy's recent forecast, it says that we'll use more oil in 2035 than we're using today. And so if we're going to use more oil, we should produce it here. Because every dollar that's produced here is a dollar that doesn't go abroad. Where do you think it will be hit the hardest? Will it be in exploration? Will it just be in domestic jobs? When will, will we, what will we see first? Well, the first impact is when you take a dollar away from the industry, it's a dollar that's not invested in either purchasing uh, the rights to be able to drill, hiring people, ultimately putting uh, iron in the ground for expansion. And so it's going to be a series of all those things that are negative impacts on the economy. Now, some of these tax incentives are, are, are put in there to encourage oil and gas companies to, to actually um, explore for, for new uh, gas and oil here in the United States. Uh, would you be able to do this if you did not have these incentives? Well, it depends on the individual firm, it depends on the market conditions and so on, but going forward these were exactly right, put in place to encourage domestic production. Uh, so we shouldn't step backwards from that when we're trying to generate more energy, we're trying to improve our energy security, and we're trying to generate jobs. Now, if, there, if there's less money for exploration here in the United States, uh, a, a lot of the uh, petroleum companies are just going to explore in other countries, correct? Well, that certainly could be an outcome. But the point is, is that if you take away a dollar from the industry, it's a dollar that can't be spent anywhere. Now, uh, what do you see uh, going for, for, forward? Uh, what are you hearing on Capitol Hill as far as other senators and congressmen? Do you think that this budget will be the same, or will Congress um, stand up to the president as they did last year? Well, we hope that thoughtful congressmen and senators will move forward understanding that if we want to generate more energy, the time is not to take increased taxes on an industry. Uh, so we're going to be carefully working with folks, uh, getting the message out, uh, pointing out what happened in previous times when we tried this, and hopefully we'll see wise policy going forward. And what does this do to the industry when there's a perception that every year that your tax incentives are going to be taken away? Um, 
uh, the point I'm trying to get at is that the last uh, auction they had for uh, sales in the Gulf of Mexico didn't go as well as the administration hoped it would to get tax revenues. Was that a result of an industry thinking, well, if we bid on these parcels of land, who knows next year if our tax incentives will be taken away? Well, it, it certainly introduces a lot more uncertainty. And when you have uncertainty about one, your tax policy, or two, royalty policy, or a whole host of things, it means that you're not going to be sure how you're going to be able to budget to uh, be able to have a, an economic project going forward. So there's no question that this introduces uncertainty at the wrong time. All right, John Felmy, Chief Economist at API, thank you for joining us. I'm Lee Patrick Sullivan, and you're watching Clean Skies News.